Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Our Issues Birmingham. Today's guest is a regular, Barnett Wright, executive editor of the Birmingham Times Media Group. Welcome, Barnett. Thank you for having me. It's always, always good to see you and talk to you. We have a pretty good little rapport. We get to chit chat about things going on locally. Uh, you seem to have your thumb on the pulse of most things, politic at least. So why don't we start there and then we'll move along from there. So we have an election coming up in August. Uh, there's some, uh, there's of course, uh, Mayor Woodfin, uh, who's running for re-election, but he's got some contenders. Uh, what are your comments about what's going on out there uh, as it relates to the election that's coming up? You know, this is, uh... This is setting up to be one of the most uh, competitive races in a long time. You have the incumbent, uh, Mayor Woodfin, as you mentioned. You also have, you, you, you have uh, LaShonda Scales, Jefferson County Commissioner, uh, who is experienced in elections. I think she's won three city council elections. Uh, and then you have uh, former Mayor William Bell, um, who's, who's won his share of elections, and then Chris Woods, um, who uh, is campaigning about as hard as anybody. So this can be very, very competitive. When you say he, uh, Chris Woods is campaigning about as hard as anybody, you mean he's out and about more? Or you mean yeah, he's... Yeah, well, I, 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 I don't know if more, but you see a lot of Chris Woods signs up, right? If you go throughout the city... Uh, there's a preponderance of Chris Wood signs. I don't know exactly what that means, but of course you see signs from the other candidates, but you seem to have more of the Chris Wood signs. Maybe it's early. Okay, maybe you'll see the other candidates uh, inundate, flood the neighborhoods with their signs. But right now you see, I see, I've seen a majority of Chris Wood signs. So is that four candidates total? Is that, well, there, there's some other candidates. Those are the four major candidates. Um, I think uh, there are a few others who probably uh, are expected to uh, uh, announce, but those are the main ones. Those are the ones everybody's talking about so far. What date is the final day of qualification? I believe it's July 17th. And then election is in August? Huh? And election is August 24th. Okay. Well, that's a pretty short fuse if you want to get in late. You you don't have a lot of time. Do we have any... You don't, especially Go ahead. With the, especially with the, with the high-profile folks already out there. Do you see um, vulnerabilities in Mayor Woodfin's um, chances of re-election that, that are real? I know one thing that keeps coming up, and, and we just have to deal with it head on is uh, not necessarily the crime rate because the crime rate's down overall, but we have an incredibly high homicide rate, but that's not just happening in Birmingham, that's happening across the country. Um, that seems to be something that would give him a vulnerability to me. Absolutely, um, yes. I think that's the one area, uh, the number of homicides, um, that are occurring, uh, I don't want to say daily. I don't know if it's daily, but we do know it's weekly. And some of them are, are high profile homicides, right? When you have children uh, who have been slain uh, or, or who have been killed uh, about, by gunfire, right? You, have, you had a pastor's daughter on Easter Sunday, 32 years old, uh, who, who out in the park. So these are the kind of high profile issues um, that residents will certainly talk about and certainly uh, the candidates will talk about. So that is a, a vulnerability for the mayor that he has to address. I mean, he's had several press conferences. He's talked about um, some law enforcement uh, initiatives where he had the DA, 
we had the uh, U.S. attorney, uh, had the sheriff. So they've talked about some of these initiatives, but if these murders, if these homicides continue, uh, people won't be thinking about the initiatives, they'll be thinking about the victims. You know, a lot of, you know, Ramsey Archibald with uh, AL.com has done a pretty deep dive into this subject. Um, and I've asked him, although he, he did follow up, I don't think he went here, but many of these homicides occur within a residence in terms of the inability to resolve conflict in some other fashion amongst friends, family members, acquaintances that just happen to be in the same place at the same time and somebody's carrying a weapon and that's how they deal with it. I don't know what that statistic is, but I think it's important to draw that distinction as opposed to the ones you pointed out that are more high profile in nature. Uh, do you agree with that assessment of the, of the homicide situation? I do agree. And first of all, I do want to say Ramsey Archibald did a great job uh, with his report. As a matter of fact, uh, the Birmingham Times has picked up on that. We, we used some of his graphics in our May 13th edition, uh, about on his May 13th edition. And uh, we also interviewed uh, neighborhood uh, residents and presidents about the crime uh, um, situation in Birmingham, we packaged it with what Rams reported on. So I, I know we have to probably take a break, but we can pick up on this after we come back. Let's do that. That's very good. Thank you for helping me out with the timing issue. Uh, this is our Issues Birmingham. We're going to talk a little bit more about what we've been talking about, and then we'll move on to something a little more upbeat, I hope. This is our Issues Birmingham. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. We're talking with Barnett Wright, my good friend, author, editor, chief cook and bottle washer of all <laughs> things uh, Birmingham. Uh, met Barnett when he was covering Vestavia many, 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 many moons ago. Uh, and we have remained friends and have maintained a friendship, which I think gives us a really good rapport. I hope you find it uh, as comfortable uh, watching as we find as comfortable talking with one another. So yeah. as doom and gloom as it may seem, the homicide issue is real and we can't just ignore it. And I don't think the mayor is ignoring it. Hence, the most recently announced tax task force of all these different law enforcement agencies. But you were talking about Ramsey Archibald's piece and how you borrowed from it for something you did. So if you wouldn't mind following up with that. Yeah, absolutely. So so what we did was we used his his graphics, his reporting, his numbers, and we asked the uh, uh, neighborhood residents, we asked uh, neighborhood officers, you know, about the, the crime problem. And uh, we reported on that in the May uh, 13th uh, edition, which was a cover story. But you also brought up something that's, that's, that's very interesting to keep in mind. You know, if you, some of these homicides are in a residence, um, two individuals, oftentimes they know each other, they're related to each other, um, and they get into argument and it leads to a shooting and it leads to a stabbing. I mean, the question is how much of this, how much of that, how much of that kind of crime is at the feet of the um, is at the feet of the elected officials, right? Can you blame the mayor for that? Can you blame the police chief for that? You know, I say no. I, I say that you can't. Um, however, it happens on their watch, you know. 
And when you see these numbers, right, oftentimes people don't carve out those crimes where uh, somebody is shot in the park versus somebody shot in their bedroom. So people uh, that are inside the home, you know, you, you talk about assigning blame. Right. Uh, it's very difficult to assign blame on the mayor or the police chief. In that instance, I feel. I mean, what could be done by them that would have prohibited that from occurring? I, I, I don't believe anything. Uh, I, I also struggle with the logic of this, what's it called, the sh shot spotter? Yes. It's after the fact. I mean, right. <laughs> so we hear, I mean, by then, somebody's already dead or at least wounded. So I know there are buildings around the city that are watching everything, uh, but they still can't seem to uh, get it under control. I think COVID hasn't helped with the tension and the stress amongst right. people. Um, I'm not blaming COVID. I'm just saying it's a factor. And I don't think we should pick on Birmingham because it's not just Birmingham. It's, it's a nationwide problem. And how do we address it? I have some ideas. Do you know of anything that's being done other than boosted up law enforcement to try to curtail some of this behavior? Well, I, I think it, 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 like you say, with spot shot, that's after the fact. I, I think there are a lot of things that, that have to be done uh, uh, before uh, we get to a lot of these points. For example, uh, we talk about, um, in, in our article that, that we reported on it, a lot of people talk about conflict resolution, right? Maybe we need to incorporate a curriculum in our schools, okay, to teach children about conflict resolution. How do you resolve problems, you know, when they occur, okay? How do you, instead of the first um, action that you have, if so, if you perceive that someone has done you wrong, the first thing you want to do is go get a gun and go with a knife to resolve that problem. I mean, we need to find ways to sit down. Um, uh, my wife and I don't agree all the time, right? But we have a, a way where we can resolve our differences. Um, there are people who I have covered as a newspaper reporter who really were, they were very angry with the way I covered the story, okay? We found a way to resolve it. So conflict resolution is one way to do it. Another problem, uh, Judge, I always call you Judge. I mean, when I when I met you, it's okay. You judge. It feels good. But one another problem <laughs> that we have in our community I'm is that I'm pe <laughs> <laughs> people people also we want to blame the police, but yet no one wants to come forward with information for some of these crimes. You know, we have this no snitching um, uh, a belief, you know, in the community. We yet, you know, there are people who have information, people who are aware of some ways in which some of these crimes can be solved, but yet they don't want to cooperate, cooperate with the detectives. Okay, You can't blame the police for that. Right. Well, I know, uh, and briefly I'll touch upon this, I've mentioned it before. I know the Birmingham, Greater Birmingham Home Builders Association has tried to institute an apprenticeship program because the goal being to take guns out of young people's hands. Most of these things occur with young adults or teenagers uh, and replace them with a, a skill. You know, teaching carpentry, teaching electricity, uh, teaching plumbing, uh, to get those programs going. Back in the old days, there used to be musical programs that Dr. Panyon could possibly be involved in at UAB. From UAB, yes. Uh, we're going to take a break because we've run out of time for this segment, but let's talk about some positive things that we can do to try to turn this cycle around. Uh, this is Our Issues Birmingham. We'll be right back with Barnett Wright. Don't go away.
Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. We're going to change subjects because enough doom and gloom. We have some positive things going on in the city. I think they need to be uh, at least mentioned and talked about. We have a new stadium. We have Caraway development that's going on. Uh, among other things, we have the World Games coming, which is a big, big deal. Uh, what can you share with us about those items? Well, um, yes, there are a lot of things happening. You know, uh, another thing to think about is, so so we'll have the Magic City Classic again back this fall. It was in the spring. We didn't have one in the fall, so that's huge. Also, um, we have a new classic, a football classic coming to Legion Field. Tuskegee uh, is going to be playing Morehouse. That game had been played in, in Georgia. So the city council, uh, Birmingham City Council recently approved a three-year contract bringing that football game to Legion Field. So, so Legion Field still has some life um, going for it. I know a lot of people are concerned about everything going to, to the new stadium, okay? But Legion Field still has some life and will still have some football games. Now, speaking about the new stadium that you mentioned, Protective, I mean, that's huge for downtown because UAB now has a world-class a facility in which to play their football games. That's part of an attraction, you know, uh, part of the downtown area. And, and that will go in nice with the whole Caraway. They're, they're renovating that, uh, rehabilitating that whole corridor um, to mixed use, uh, green space. Um, so that's going to be for that particular area, not just downtown, but those neighborhoods up around in Norwood, um, uh, Green, well, all all of, all of those areas up there, the north side, North Birmingham. So that that's that's good, and will give people additional things in the city to do. And what the city says, uh, a judge, is that you know the revenue that that that's generated from these new projects can benefit the entire city. Yeah, and when you say the entire city, you know we're have an audience that's covering multiple counties. Uh, we're not just limiting the benefit to the inner city of Birmingham. It, right. it benefits the entire county and even beyond the county, I would think. I, I know we're putting hotels up like they're going out of style, I guess, to accommodate folks. Uh, there seems to be a lot of that going on. And, and when you, you're putting up hotels, that means tourism, right? I mean, that means people are coming into the city um, there, there are still a lot of first-class attractions in, um, in, in Birmingham. Uh, we talk about Bir Birmingham Museum of Art, okay, which has some great exhibits. Uh, you have Vulcan, okay. You have the Birmingham Zoo. Um, and I think, I believe the firefighters, police games are coming here, which is going to be huge, okay. That's coming to Birmingham. And that may, that may draw more than the world games from what, I, what I'm told. And all of these have huge uh, economic uh, uh, impact um, of $100 million or more. Yeah, we have Civil Rights Institute as well. The Birmingham uh, Civil Rights Institute, of course, and um, the, the, the arena, right? The, the BJCC arena, that's being uh, 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 renovated. Refurbed. So absolutely, when you have all of these attractions, um, I, I think the, the BCRI, Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, probably brings more people into this area um, as much as, if not more than any other attraction. You know, just a simple drive down Third Avenue South and uh, at Railroad Park and that entire area, uh, it, it's just vibrant with activity and residences and bars and restaurants and people, lots of people out and about. That's a good sign. I see, especially on a weekend, I sit on a Saturday or a Sunday is where you see most of the activity. So, you know, there's a lot of good things going on in Birmingham. Um, let's not focus on the negative. Let's try to focus on the positive and, and come away feeling good about our city as opposed to not good about our city. Yeah, and, and I know we spend a lot of time uh, talking about crime, but... Uh, uh, Judge, that's just a small fraction of what happens in our community on a daily basis, right? Okay, the the the, the vast majority of things um, that that are happening in Birmingham are positive. 
we talk about railroad park. You know, there's nothing more therapeutic than going downtown sometime and taking a walk and seeing the diverse people who are in that particular area, okay? Taking a walk, taking a jog, eating lunch, laying on that lawn, just relaxing. You can almost say the same for Pazitz, the downtown food hall, okay? You can go down there on any weekday and just see such a diverse group of people sitting there and, and, and just, just, just enjoying their food. So yes, okay, we can talk about the negative, but I can tell you, okay, from my experience, from spending a lot of time in downtown Birmingham and, and in some of the neighborhoods, there's far more positive than negative. Yeah, and I think both, not just the mayor, but the city council needs to be given uh, a, a pat on the back for making some of those things happen. Yeah. Uh, I know we have some contested events in the city council races. We don't really have time to go into all of that uh, in this outing. But if you had one thing to say to the citizens of Birmingham that they could do to make things better, what would that be? Vote. Vote. That simple. That's it. Well, make your voice heard. You know, do your homework. Find out those candidates who can continue the good things that we talked about and get out on August 24th and vote, not just the city council, but also the school board. Thank you, Barnett. I appreciate you being with us today. This is Our Issues Birmingham. We'll see you next week. Have a good day. Roll over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things but they're all pure love. You told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun?